What on earth is the Foreign Income Exclusion Report 2555 that is attached to your 1040 tax return? And how does it help you save tax in America? Great question, and I try and answer that in this video. Hi everyone, my name is Simon Mishevich from Optimize Accountants and I'm going to be talking today about the foreign earned income. Who should use this form? Well, this is for individuals, whether you're American living in the United Kingdom or any other foreign country for that matter, and has earned income. Earned income being employment income or self-employment income. But as an American, you still have to do a tax return irrespective of where you are in the world and they will tax you on your worldwide income. That looks kind of strange when you're from the UK. Anyway, um, this also is useful if you're British and you're now living in the United States, but you still have some sort of income going in from there. So uh, you, there are some physical tests that you need to be applied here. So please be careful with this. This form is typically used for Americans living abroad as opposed to foreigners that are kind of also tax residents in the US as well as in a different country. I'll explain more about that in a little while. But the, the form is used, like I said, it's a very simplistic form to say to Americans, uh, the IRS in America should say, uh, that I have my foreign income, but I don't want you to tax me on it. And it's, the, it's a, a global amount. And what I want to do, actually, I'll, what I'll do is go through the, the amount that we're looking for. So the income exclusion amount is this one here. I'm just going to highlight this. So the maximum foreign earned income exclusion is $108,700. Right there is the, no, the number I want you to use. If you've got that kind of income, should you use the foreign income exclusion? Well, the answer would be, well, yes, it could be relatively simple. But if you are in a high rate tax country, then you might still want to use a form 1116, which is the foreign tax credit form, which I've done plenty of videos about those. So do check those out. But I want to focus on here. This is a nice, simple form uh, to say, well, actually, uh, I just don't want to have the hassle. I want my tax return to be simple. So my foreign income exclusion is 108,700. So American living in the UK, uh, or any other country, straight away you you have that. What happens if you earn more? Well, don't worry because there is also something called the uh, home allowance as well. So what I want to do on that point is talk to you about the foreign earned income uh, amounts. And I'm just quickly trying to look for the form here actually. Uh, so here we are. So this is uh, a, a, another form that you can need to look into. Uh, which is the instructions for 2555, but you get something called the the home exclusion as well. So it's not just 180,000 pounds, sorry, pounds, the dollars, I should say, of the foreign earned income that you have, but you also get a home deduction as well. There's a lot of information on this particular form. Uh, and I think it's good that IRS puts so much detail in, but it can be also overwhelming. It'd be nice to have a, some sort of executive summary um, but they have got here the 2021 limits on housing expenses and it's listed by country so this is not just now your income that you have but you get a housing allowance in a foreign country as well so for this example you've got all the countries you can see there i'm just whipping through them but in for example a lot of americans reside in london the united kingdom and therefore you get this amount here of $72,300 uh, because you have this home exclusion amount. I'm just going to go to the back up to this. So it says limit on housing expenses. Now, if your home expenses are less than $72,300, then of course you take that. You don't take the $72,300. If you've got 80,000 home expenses, wow, expensive, uh, then you would only be allowed to utilize up to $72,300. Uh, but right there, straight away, what I want you to, to highlight is the fact that you're nearly at $200,000, which would be excluded from your income. So therefore, could this be useful for you rather than use the Form 1116 tax credit? I'll let you decide that, but it is certainly easier to use this 255 form. 
Um, so I'm just going to go into the top to the form now to say, well, what information you would need to fill in. Um, the foreign earned income requires you to put the employer's name, the address. No real difference there. It's got the employee US address, and that's because you may have a branch in uh, the US as well as the country that you're working in. Um, of what country you're citizen national. So you would put that detail in there. And then here, this is the big thing. Who can use the 255 uh, form? And I did say at the uh, right at the top, you might be someone that's British moving into the US. But actually, you have to be quite careful with this because you, uh, you need to be, so as it says here, bona fide residence uh, test. So what does that really mean? Well, to use this form 255, foreign income exclusion, you need to make sure that you are going to meet their requirements, which is the physical presence test, which is a bona fide presence test. It basically means someone that is legitimately in a different country. So they have set up home there, they are working there, their lifestyle, uh, everything is centered around that new country, not the United States. There's also a physical uh, requirements test as well, as it says here. Um, generally, to meet the physical presence test, you must be physically present in a foreign country, UK, Spain, Hong Kong, wherever, uh, for at least 330 days, full days, by the way, uh, during a 12-month period. And what is a full day? I'm glad you asked. Uh, I've got that information for you here. Full day. A full day is a period of 24 consecutive hours beginning and ending at midnight. So it's a full consecutive day. So part day, not going to be counted. Uh, you must spend the full day in a foreign country or countries for that to be counted. So just be mindful of that. But 330 days is the requirement for you to fill in this uh, foreign earned income form. Uh, the date bona fide residence began now what you need to bear in mind here is when you physically landed in the country. And if you're still there, it's not ended. But to what you do need to say to uh, the IRS is this is continues or continuous. OK, so continues is the stated language in the IRS uh, guidance for this particular thing. So just put that in there. Um, and it says in here, if you were present in the United States or possessions during the year, complete these forms. So you have to be open about this. How will they know? Well, they do have all this data coming from the aerospace defense, all the airports in the world. They have all this information on you. They can see your passport number. They can check your IDs, etc. So please be make, it, make sure that you complete this as accurately as possible. Uh, enter the type of visa in which you enter the foreign country. If you're in the UK, Spain, Hong Kong, wherever, uh, you do need to specify the type of visa. So they may have a reference, but what I would suggest you do is put in the more of a generic term, so work visa, and then put in brackets the actual visa type in that country. Okay, and that's really useful for them. Uh, it just gives them a bit more information on you on that as well. Uh, Taxpayers qualifying under present sets, we talked about that, haven't we? So here again, it's asking you from the period date. Uh, so again, you just need to put in the from and continues or continuous. Uh, enter the physical uh, principal country of employment during your tax year. So do note, it's looking for you are physically going there for a good reason. Work is a good reason. And therefore, you need to put in your country for that as well. And um, I'm just going to see if I can make this work. Here we go. Uh, what you have to do is put in your total wages, salaries, commissions. Um, again, it's a really important that you get your wage slips. Uh, if you're in the UK, please be careful with this because if you're putting your 2021, you cannot use your P60. And uh, the P60 runs from the 6th of April to the 5th of April. Uh, unlike Spain and Hong Kong, where they use calendar systems, which is very similar to the, well, is the same as the IRS, then you can use that. But in the UK, no, we do things very differently. Um, and you have to be very carefully uh, careful with your regards to the data that you're pulling into this tax return. And you've got 
other kind of ex income expenses and the maximum money that you have. So if you've got a car in the UK, you will be charged a P11D benefits in kind. And that would all need to be entered into this form as well. Even though it's not a cash amount, it is still money that you have received. Uh, you may have got allowances as well from that particular employer. Uh, taxpayers, are you claiming the housing exclusion amount? Again, if you're in a country such as the UK, you do get to this home exclusion amount. So it's not just $108,000 that you get from your foreign earned income. You also get this bumper amount of money because you are living in that country. They'll give you an extra foreign income exclusion roundabouts. So you, uh, as I mentioned before, um, once you fill in the details about your home, ex your, your home uh, deduction, then you would fill in this information and this would then populate through to your tax return. And in essence, if you're earning shy, I would say around about between 108,000 and just shy maybe of $200,000, then you really shouldn't be looking at paying any taxes in the United States. But you do need to tell the IRS that you are abroad, you do have a job, you've paid taxes already, so please don't tax me below that amount. Um, what happens though, if you earn more than $200,000 as for example, and you're in the UK and you've got 108,000 for an income exclusion, you've got your $72,000 for your home deduction, what happens then? Well, you then go through this scenario whereby you might still have to go for your foreign tax credit form and do some sort of real detailed numbers to say, well, this is the income that I haven't taken out for my foreign income exclusion. And that left amount that's left, which will be subject now to the US tax, well, I've still got foreign taxes attributed to that portion. And therefore, you would have to go through that cycle as well. So for most people, I would say watching this video, the foreign income exclusion is a simple way of doing it um, in terms of doing your tax return. You don't have to fill in too much information and within maybe an hour, you should be able to do your tax return. If you earn more than 200,000, I would suggest that you get some tax consultations done to understand the difference between the 255 foreign income exclusion and the 1116 tax credit or how you can combine the two. Um, also, if you're in a foreign country, you should really look at uh, whether you should use the 1116 form instead, which is the foreign tax credit rather than the 2555. So hopefully that video has been useful. I appreciate it's a bit lengthy in detail, but I hope that you can go onto the IRS website now and feel a bit more comfortable with the form, but also go onto the IRS website and look for 2555 uh, more details about filling the form in. So until next time, my name is Simon Mishevic from Optimize Accountants. I'll see you again soon. Hopefully you found that video useful and interesting. Make sure that you do press that like button to help the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. But before you go, I want to share with you this video that I think you should be watching next. So go check this video out right now.